Hey, what's up, everybody? It's Matt from Rocky's War Room, and welcome tonight, where we talk about the new epic. Pardon me. Epic battles, American Civil War, uh, miniature set that they just came out with at Warlord Games. I thought I heard somebody say something. Uh, uh, so tonight I have with me Nache, the OG, right, and the wardrobe. So let's get into this. All right. You, right. Right now you are staring at a rather large white box that says American Civil War starts at upside down. And there's a reason why it's upside down. Uh, the reason being is because I open it from this side right here. Or no, I don't. Never mind. <laughs> but there you go. Is it on the screen? I mean, it's so, I mean, it's huge. I mean, that's like almost the size of my hand huge and mcmurray has joined us hello mcmurray sorry i'm late guys no worries we just got started so it's a rather large box and so the the epic battles american war starter set i was secretly super excited for ha <laughs> um but i said nope Nope, ain't happening. I ain't doing that. No way. I've got, you know, a bazillion two, uh, 10 mil and, and, and things like that. There's no way I'm going to be, you know, doing this epic battles, blah, blah, blah. And lo and behold, it it's sitting right here in front of me. <laughs> I was like, there's no way. Um, I know there's a, a quite a bit of excitement uh, for sure uh, here at first, you know, uh, with this and everything like that. But uh, we'll get into reasons why we weren't and what why we are and uh, what's in this kit. Now, it's a really large kit. So we're going to unbox this a little bit at a time. I'm going to push this box out because I have to open it. <sighs> um, I've always I've always been a fan um of the era, uh, the American Civil War era. As a matter of fact, I have a wargaming group called Wargaming ACW. And Wargaming ACW is got about, oh, I think, uh, 2,000, 3,000 people involved. And the reason why I started is because I wanted people to be able to come to a space where they can, you know, hey, ask a question, you know, and get, get an answer on uniforms or battles or anything like that. And, uh, <laughs> I was doing 28 millimeter and I painted one union regiment and said, yeah, I'm done in <laughs> <laughs> 28 millimeter. So I bought a bunch of 10 mil and then I started doing imaginations with that and uh, my imaginations pro project with that. And I still got enough to where I could do 10 mil, but I was like, no, I'd rather, you know, it just, it just didn't sit well. And then I saw these uh, online and I was instantly intrigued. They're, they're not, you know, too big, but they're not too small, which you will see here tonight. Um, and then Warlord drops this thing. <laughs> and uh, yeah, yeah. here it is. So the first thing when you open up the box is these were cellophane wrapped um, with some nice uh, uh, printed flags. Um, if you guys can see this, it came in the box. There's two sets of them. Um, and they actually are marked. Um, this would be the 18th Pennsylvania, the 55, 55th uh, New York Infantry Regiment, the Lafayette Guard, um, the Irish Brigade, um, the New York Volunteers Regiment, um, the Zouaves Regiments. They even have uh, flags for those. Um, I know that uh, Devin's happy about that. Oh, yes. Love the Zouaves. <laughs> but they don't have any Zouaves in the box set. No, they do not. But we'll get to that. Yes. Uh, then they have the Iron Brigade. And of course, the Iron Brigade was, uh, uh, I guess, in my mind, um, kind of like what I've read in the history or something is, is the most type, famous type unit that they mentioned during Gettysburg, even though there was a whole bunch of other units there but uh the iron brigade was the one that hold that hill until the rest of the union came up right am i correct about that please correct me if i'm wrong i think that's the iron brigade it's the wisconsin unit no no okay no correct. the iron brigade 
uh, was, I believe, primarily Kentuckians by the time. Um, well, this is Wisconsin. No, it was Wisconsin. Where, who am I thinking of then? They're the Black Hats. Yeah, they're the Black Hats, yep. yep. I think they were made famous in another battle. And then they fought the middle in, in uh, Gettysburg. Okay. The ones that took on was it Pickett's Charge? Maybe that's what I don't know. That's getting into the. Are you mixing up with Hippie's Second Wisconsin that he? No. <laughs> or for what he thought was rescuing Dan Sickles? No. Uh, okay. But the Second Wisconsin is right here. So, but really nice flags, e even the uh, cavalry flags. So. Or cavalry flags um, right here. So anyway, so uh, then we get this uh, Black Powder Epic Battles of American Civil War. Um, looks like a rule book style or a rule book of some kind. Um, because when you open it up, uh, it has the history, the armies, the rules, the battle, and special rules. So I'm assuming that this is basically and i haven't looked at this it's the first time i've looked at this um basically the rules to get started in playing right away maybe quick start rules or, or telling you about one specific battle um the kentucky lawyer <laughs> um beautifully done um it does say the armies here uh infantry and formations uh the fences do Yeah, and even has example of lines. I guess they took the Black Potter book and kind of shrunk it down into a small book that only represents uh, these type of miniatures or, or the American Civil War. So, can you pretty much use the Black Powder rules? But do we know, or is it well? Uh, correct, you can because there's a reason, and we'll get into the box here in a minute. Okay. Um, they have a few scenarios: the Battle of Wilson's Creek, uh, the Battle of Salem Church, uh, the Gettysburg Day One, and Gettysburg Day Two. How many of those packs do you need to fight Gettysburg? Well, Day One or Two. I have no idea. Because each of those is a regiment, right? Each what? Each one of the like... No, never mind. We'll get to that in a minute. Okay. Uh, <laughs> then they give you this neat little terrain. Uh, this is the North America... It's a 15 millimeter farmhouse and fence set, uh, which is really neat. Uh, they call it 15 millimeter, but um, most of Sarissa's precision stuff is excellent, but it's, it runs a little small. Uh, smaller than you expect. Um, <clears throat> but it is 15 millimeter in their range and it comes with fencing and uh, a couple barns there. So that's pretty cool. They give you some ready-made terrain. So you don't have to, you know, if you don't have any 15 mil, which I don't, uh, they give you that. And then we get into the Holy box <laughs> and but, like the stress of precision. So I was excited to see that part in there anyway. All that plastic now is making me itch. <laughs> Yeah, um, I was that shocked. Is a lot of plastic. Uh, this is definitely epic because it's an epic amount of the miniatures. Uh, it's 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 crazy. Um, but uh, this is what your answer should answer your question there, Todd. Um, this is the miniature black powder rule book. So I'm thinking that the small book is a get started, get playing book. Mm hmm. And this one would be the full rules. Yeah. So, and then if I have special ACW rules in that small one too. Like battle. Yeah, because there is a Glory Hallelujah expansion for Black Powder, which I still still do have that uh, gives you all the colors for the regiments and stuff, which is fantastic. Right. Um, that goes along with it that has those specific rules as well. I think they just did a miniature miniaturized version of Glory Hallelujah. Glory Hallelujah has a ton of history in it. So and then you got this, this beefy box here, which I'm going to set off to the side and I'm going to take out what, what you get first. I'm going to, I'm going to look, take a look at the miniatures. Then we'll take a look at the bases that came, that came with it. All right. Set that off to the side. Make sure it doesn't block my lighting for crying out loud. It's a huge box. <laughs> I mean, 
the amount that you get for the, I believe it's $120 retail. Right. Is, is insane. So we're going to set these over here and we'll start. Um, and it's gray versus blue, right? <laughs> We're going to start with the gray, which is the Confederates, and then we'll take a look at the Union. And I'm going to set this off to the side, this, get this box out of the way, so forgive me. Oh, man. Oh, I wouldn't look at that. Miniature D sixes. Oh, boy. Aren't those oh, they're not that small. Yeah. They're, they're small. Like, Maybe that's side the end. What's that, Todd? They look like they're about the size of the MMP dice. Yeah, they're really small. <laughs> wow. Oh, sweet. Now, you don't even have to paint them. Blue versus gray. Yep, that's that's what I was saying when I first looked at it. I go, oh, look at that. You can just put them together on the base and be just fine. <laughs> <laughs> but we're not going to do that. You know we don't do that. Okay. So Real, real quickly, going to uh, jump in with some uh, oh, comments. Oh, yeah, go for, go for the comments. Uh, P. Beckus. Hello, oh, Paul. Paul. Hello, Paul. Welcome. Hurrah, my Yankee and Reb friends in the USA. Uh, Peter Peter Bergs. Hello, thanks for doing the presentation. Oh, you're very welcome, sir. Uh, Jarl Mazak. Hello, Robbie from Japan. Good morning, gentlemen. Good morning, Robbie. Uh, is this the uh, Jarl Mazak? Is this the new six millimeter stuff? No, it's actually like twelve millimeter. It's some weird proprietary thing that. Warlord did. Um, modeling for Advantage uh, says flags are cool. Yes, the flags are cool. Kaiser. Uh, and then Paul responds to uh, Jarl Mazik says 13 and a half millimeter or Warlord scale. Uh, yeah. Robbie commented OMG. I'm probably, I'm fairly positive that's when uh, you opened the box. Uh, and then Paul Beckus uh, said, will Matt ever finish painting all these figures? Probably not. Uh, then John Longshore, <laughs> amazing stuff. They send these with every issue of Wargamers Illustrated. I never pay attention. These were great. Want more. And then modeling an advantage. You, uh, why you, why you can't fight Gettysburg with this set? No cavalry. Mm -hmm. well, yeah. Yes and no. I mean, there is, but they're generals. Find me an instance where mounted cavalry fought at Gettysburg, and we'll talk. All right. Well, thanks, guys, for comments. So let's take a look at it. These are the Confederate sprues. As you can see, I'm looking at 3, 6, 9, 12. There's a reason for that. Um, every one of these sprues, uh, you get, uh, let's see, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 stands one cannon and one general so that would be uh one 12 regiments 12 generals 12 cannon and the generals are all on horse and i believe they're all you know the same pose they are the same pose they're exactly the same sprue Everyone um, is the same half of them are blue half of them are gray so that's 12 of the confederates and we'll get uh let's let's get a closer look at this if I can zoom in here for you guys. Let's zoom in. How's that? Can everybody see that? Yeah. Do I need to focus anymore or anything? Uh, no, I. it's pretty clear. All right. Uh, so you get um, identical sprues. There's 12 of them. And the idea here, and I'm going to show you some uh, a skit of the bases. Like they give you um, enough bases to... Uh, one base is one sprue, basically. And they're different than I've ever seen Warlord do. Uh, because on the bottom of these bases, they have notches. And these notches fit with these holes in these bases right here. So you're going to have two deep on each base. And you're going to have five bases per sprue. <clears throat> so one, two, three, four, and five. And, of course, we talked about the scale. And... Get a little bit closer. How's that as far as focus goes? Pretty good. I like it. I mean, I can focus in. Even yeah, we're out, we're out of focus now. The cloth is in focus. I will fix that if I can. 
So uh, while, you're right. while you're focusing, oh, you had it. So it looks like like that. Pretty good on mine. Yeah. Go. All right. Man, it seems like you'd want to paint them before you mount them. Yes. You know, I was thinking about that of painting them on the sprue would be a heck of a lot easier with the way they have this set up because you're not cutting it off on a painted part. You're cutting it off where you're going to be putting it on the base. So Put it on the arms. All right. Yeah, but you can touch that up easy. Well, I, that's, uh, I would cut off the arm uh, at the arm part. Oh, okay. I mean, I guess I'm just thinking because they're standing so close together on the thing on the base. I was going to say this just this the construction overall. If you're familiar with Perry's travel battles, it looks like you'll be doing the exact same thing just on a larger scale. Like, yeah. like the fact that Warlord ripped off the the printing or casting them, and you know, faces in green, and then the the armies in their respective colors. So we'll as well as the style of it being the same. Um, John Longshore says 13 and a half millimeter. That's, that's weird. I thought they might be 10. And then uh, Paul says they scale perfect next to 12 millimeter Callistra ACW figures. Yeah. So there you go. Well, uh, there's the Canon figure. So the Canon gets put together with uh, the base of the Canon with the barrel and then the wheel is separate, attached to two of the fellows holding the cannon on one side. And this is upside down with the general there. Let me turn it around. <clears throat> and the other wheel on the other side, you know, with four guys per cannon. And, of course, the general. Um, and you get one of those same pose, um, which that's kind of disappointing for me. But, uh, honestly, he's just going to be a playing piece, you know, so... Uh, and we'll show you the back. Yeah, at, at, the, at this scale, does it really matter? No. And here's your command sprue right here. This one here. I'll show you the other side. There we go. And now I'll give you a look at the bases, and I'll just do this once because it's the same for both of them. I'll, I'll give you guys a close-up of those. So this would be the cannon base. Uh, these would be the general's bases. And these would be the regular troop spaces. <clears throat> so you're essentially three, three different base sizes all together. So five equals one unit. So you're going to have one extra one of these on here and one extra one of these when you cut them off. And they'll even out by the time, because they're all the same, you know, by the time you get to the end there. You may even have some extra ones. So the union, and it'll probably be a little out of focus. Uh, I, will, I will put it back in focus in a second. The union is 12 as well, as you can see, like for the Confederates. And we'll break out a close-up of the union soldiers. We'll start with the command base. And they're made with blue plastic. Um, classic, you know, red and blue. Or, I'm sorry, not red and blue, gray and blue. There's your regular troops. And your command sprue is, let's see, right here. <clears throat> so they're almost identical. And, and I mean, I, I would I would dare say they're they're damn close. So let's let's go ahead and compare command sprues. How about that? Uh, let me get them in the camera here. So it might be a little bit tough to do. Uh Nope, I could do it like this. So on the uh, obviously you can see. So they're almost identical, just different hats. No, uh, oh, oh. no, they're identical. Yeah, they are identical. Okay. So basically, same sprues, different color. So cannons the same. General is the same, which is fine. They're playing pieces, right? I mean, but that's it. That's uh, that's everything in the box set. So now it's time for the, the big part, which I know there's going to be a lot said <laughs> <laughs> this evening about this. There is a ton of miniatures here. 
you get quite a bit for 120. Um, whether that's worth it or not is really in the eye of the beholder, which for me, um, it's gonna, it, it, it's definitely pretty awesome. I want to focus here. So, I mean, if <clears throat> so, you, you're saying the blue and the gray, it's the same uniform and everything. Yep. So, so this is someone like me who doesn't really care, but I, I can imagine there's some Civil War buffs that are like, they're probably screaming right now at us. <laughs> but for me, it's fine. But I can, I can see, you know. But at the same time, if you're the kind of person who doesn't like care how they look and how you paint them, are you going to paint up 2,400? ACW figures, Todd. I was hoping you'd do it for me. Well, that's my point is that it seems like if you're going to paint up 2,400 figures, you got to have a hell of a lot of passion for it. <laughs> <That's good. laughs> because, well, you have to be fucking insane, to be honest with you. Um, <laughs> and yeah, that like, that's just epic drudgery. And I understand that that keeps the cost low, but Jesus, man. I mean, I, I've never, this is a good I, good project for a contrast paint. I see a lot of people doing contrast paint with them. White spray paint and uh, uh, blue and gray. I do tan. That way you can just leave the Confederates pants butternut and put a wash over it. Wow. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Uh, sort of. Yeah. Or at least some of their pants. That being said, uh, it sounds like you're not a fan, and that's okay, my Murray. Well, like, again, it's you get the feeling that you almost get the feeling that Warlord like bought this pro either bought this project off the Perry brothers or saw Travel Battle, but didn't see Tropic Thunder. And so they didn't catch Robert Downey Jr.'s iconic advice out of that movie and <laughs> completely went after it. Exactly, John. And I bet you they're not all the same sculpt, are they? Because if they were, you probably would have wound up like jumping out a window or, or suck starting a shotgun by now. <laughs> <laughs> so... I'm surprised He's that's what caught that, not somebody missing never go full retard. Um, but it, I, again, this I would definitely be a tredge. This would definitely be a very tough oh, challenge yes. to complete. Now, yeah. um, if you're going for, you know, super amazing paint jobs, um, Dude, for me, I, I, I just, I, I, I keep looking at it. And I'm thinking I could get away with, they're small enough to where I could get away with just putting one color on them. And they literally are setting it up that way uh, on the website. They have the, you know, just like they're doing with the paint sets with, you know, bolt action and stuff. They, they have, a, they have a union and a Confederate paint set. And I kind of looked at those two and it's army painter, barbarian flesh. There's, there's nothing else, you know, that's just the flesh, um, which I wouldn't use. I'd use uh, what I normally use, but, you literally could get away with probably just putting one color on them and them still look turning out. Okay. What, the flesh it, color? It, huh? Just putting the flesh color on them. No, uh, put the flesh on uh, using a Drea blue for the pants, using dark Prussian blue uh, for the oh. uniform, mm -hmm. using mm -hmm. flat Brown and metal gun, gun metal for the, the, you know, the gun with the weapons using brass for the cannon, you know, just basic, colors with no highlights, no wash, no nothing. You could probably get away with that and it'd still look okay. It would still look okay. I mean, I, I get that, but it's still 240 strips and I'm trying to think of how long it takes me to do 240 four or six man six millimeter strips. I don't know, man. That's pretty wild. Um, Paul, as far as I know, they've been talking about when they launched everything, all the specialty regiments, they were talking about doing either resin or more likely metal. Well, that'd be nice. Um, metal would. Yeah. Know. Uh, so, anyway. 
Oh, sorry. Go for it. That's okay. Um, so what, uh, Devin, uh, uh, wardrobe, everybody else, what, what are your thoughts as well? I, I, I've been out of miniatures for five years and primarily the reason I got out of it is because at the time I was doing 15 millimeter flames of war and it got to the point where I would work on a platoon for like an hour, hour and a half, you know, knock it out that quick, but it would take like four hours for my eyesight to readjust because I was just sitting there so close to the miniature working and painting on it. Um, I, I'll be honest, this set, has really got me thinking of getting back into painting uh, tempered with the fact that yes, it's going to destroy my eyesight. This is a great set. I think for someone who wants to get into ACW, but isn't a, a rivet counter or, or a fanatic. The, the hardcore ACW guys are going to hate this mainly because it is the same sprue oh, for both sides. And it, it, it's admit it's warlord then warlord isn't really the hardcore gamers uh game company that you go to uh but i think for the novice gamer for someone who's just wants to test the waters with acw i think this is a great box set i mean i am seriously seriously thinking of of, of plopping down the cash even though i have absolutely no one to play with here uh and they will just i will paint them and they will just sit in a box i still I'm really considering picking this up. <laughs> Excellent. Uh, Modeling from Vanish says, uh, if you haven't painted smaller minis before, you'd be amazed at how sloppy you can be about it, and they look good on mass, uh, not as individuals. Like he's talking about, we talk about paint the unit, not the figure. Yep. Um, exactly. And my well, 10 mils, and I know McMurray can vouch for this, uh, my 10 mils paint up so damn fast I can do 75 in a week. I mean, you're talking about a guy who's literally painting up blocks of two millimeter figures. I get that. <laughs> uh, <laughs> you are. Again, my point is if I had to paint up 240 of these 10 millimeter blocks, mm -hmm. I would go insane. Mm -hmm. it, I, it, it's the bloop bloop method. More, more power to you. It's but, the bloop bloop method. <laughs> no, I just mean, I, I Godspeed, man. Mm -hmm. Um, I feel like if 40 Flames of War figures that were all different mm -hmm. blew your eyes out after an hour and a half, that's not even two bases of these guys. Jesus yeah. Christ, Devin. Good luck, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> I, the only I, I'm going to be completely honest with you. Yeah, I don't yeah. have anything else. If I, was, if, if I was to do this project. Mm-hmm. First off, it would be a long-term project mm -hmm. because I would get bored fast. Yeah. So it would be, okay, I'm going to work one sprue this week. And I might not get to another sprue until, I don't know, a week and a half, two weeks from now type of thing. But it would be done. What about a year? It, it, would be, it, would, it would be done with contrast paints. Because I would be able to get a, I, I would either use contrast paints or a sim, the simple block paint with, uh, with dark wash. Boom. Bob's your uncle. Done. Uh, so lucky if they had this set out when I was 15, the world would have been in a different place. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but for those uh, that I, but for those that want it, that mass combat look, you have you have been saved a mountain of time not having to flash, clean, and mount those figures. Now there are some flash on them, but yes, um, I can see that. I can see that. I mean, my my personal th opinion here is this is something that I did not want to do. You see what I'm saying? Like this is something that I did not want to do but I wanted. Why? Uh, because I've always wanted to do something mass that didn't take me forever, which this clearly will take me a while, but not as long as the 28 millimeter stuff. Me personally, my, my history is, is I've tried American war of independence. I've tried French and Indian war. I've tried uh, civil war. I've tried uh, English civil war, which I absolutely love. And, and I've powered through a lot of that. 
but I find myself going, I really don't want to paint line. I really don't want to paint the same colors. So like you said, Nache, this would have to be one of those things where I take three spurs of union or three spurs of confederates and paint those that many and then do something else and then go back to it again. Just have a goal set in mind. You could not get through this without going nuts. The whole entire thing. I mean, that's clearly what we've kind of all said about this. You know, um, this would take a, this is like a lifetime project sort of, but a cut in half just by the size of the miniature and the way they did it uh, in my mind. But, you know, they did do some things that I would think would be geared towards a lot of new players, like having a, a kind of like a brush down version of the Glory Hallelujah book, including the Black Powder rule book, this mini rule book, which is nice, and not having to mess with the bases and, you know, things like that. So, I mean, my, my opinion this would not be th this would not have been first on my list but it would have been on my list that's what i'm trying to say it's a games workshop starter set it's not the warlord is not interested in selling this to existing gamers um that'd be quite obviously because either a existing gamers want the models to play as a different rule set which that's not the case here because most rule sets are going to require more than, you know, either way, in, in any case, you'll never have more than 24 units out of here unless you're going to run just random stands with no flags or anything like that. Which, yeah, because they only, they only give you one command sprue per, uh, yeah, per, so you, per sprue. So, so you've got 24 command units. So yeah. if you want to play like a snappy nappy sort of game where you only have to paint two stands per – um, you know, maneuver unit, you could do that, but you're still only going to have 24 of them. Um, mm -hmm. which is, honestly, if I had to have a gripe or if there was one just big gripe that came along with this is that kind of kills a lot of the versatility of it <clears throat> because it means you're, you're, you're still doing this. Um, the other thing is, again, it, it just strikes me as a games workshop thing. You've got really cheap, ultra simple, zero variety figures, You've got some sort of terrain, a mini rule book, and then a simplified dumbed down. Here's how you play this game that doesn't have much of an appeal to existing gamers. Again, because either you're looking for models to play different rules with, which honestly is what's going on because I've never met a single person who played Black Powder and was like, damn, that was good. Um, everybody's like, well, I guess it's kind of cool that you can play Jacobite Rebellion. <laughs> They have a rules for that, and then they also have rules for Anglo-Zulu War. But it doesn't really do either one well. So, I mean, that's – it's and I, and I get it. It's ultra cheap. It's designed to be, you know, mom gets out of her minivan, walks into Warlord Games, realizes they don't sell, you know, video games. Well, there's this thing. If you piece all these pieces together, it's actually like 250 bucks. But you buy this thing, you get a ton of stuff. You can just take it apart and put it together if you really want to and play with it and it's 120 bucks and go. Um, it'll be interesting to see if Warlord actually follows through and supports this. With all the follow-up stuff and extra stuff that they've talked about, mm -hmm. kind of like they've talked about all that stuff with a lot of kind of games that they've put out recently and then dropped off the face of the earth with it. I feel like Don Harrington would hate me forever if I didn't mention them just doing dirty like a crazy dog, the uh, the Cruel Seas franchise. It'll be interesting if that happens. I'd be happy if it did. That would be cool. Um, again, I feel like the, the rules, same sort of thing. If the rules were properly thought out and they, like, you know, really did a good job of adapting them, that has a lot of really good – we lost him in the What? We didn't hear uh, that last part. Okay. The rules are very similar. You're not in front of your mic again. If they're thought out and well tested and properly, you know, written and everything else so that they're playable, that's awesome. Then you gotta point back to Cruel Seas where it was a holy Jesus, 
what are you guys doing? And then with SPQR, it was so bad that two years later, they're giving out free rule books if you buy a pack of figures because the original rule book sucks. <laughs> that's not the case here. But the I, track, I'm, I'm hoping so too. I'm hoping it's not the case either. You the know. track record really doesn't look good, and that's really disappointing. Especially when you consider that, given that it by all means appears to be, you know, pointed towards new gamers, it's kind of one of those. It's really cool that it might get new gamers in, but if that new gamer buys, you know, a set and a set of rules and goes, man, this sucks, do we really have new gamers? Or do we have somebody who spent 120 bucks on a war game that they decided they didn't want to play anymore? I don't know. Um, again, I, I, even with Black Seas, I got all fired up to play Black Seas. I was like, oh, it's going to be cool. It's a ship game. This is really awesome. Like, I, I can't tell you the last time I bought, you know, uh, uh, a naval rule set and was like, man, there's nothing in here that I can take parts out of, whether it's, you know, actually reorganized and have an entire milk full of naval rule sets. Um, <laughs> to my great shame. Um, but they're really, and it was one of those, man, this. This stinks. I, like, I got excited because I got a good deal. Mm -hmm. And so I was like, okay, this will be cool. Either I'll have some cool stuff from the rules. Maybe the minis will be cool. But again, then it was one of those Warlord was like, oh, I'm dum 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 dum. We're going to make up our own friggin' scale because that makes sense. That, um, that way nobody can play with these ships with anything else. And they just got to come back and buy ours, which again, they did the good idea where you put out a rule or you put out a, a starter box where it's not rules. It's got a good amount of models, and it's cheap, which, again, seemed really cool. And now I'm just sitting here staring at these things like, well, these rules kind of blow. <laughs> and I've got these ships that I put together, and the third rates are a goddamn disaster to try and put together. And I can't play with any of my other ships because they're a completely different friggin' scale, and they're all the same except for some individually cast – Stern plates. Oh. Well, well, one like, yes, it's, it's just shitload of stuff, really cheap. That's awesome. Let's uh, let's get to some of the comments here, McMurray. Uh, okay. Cool product, cool product, but not for me. I would rather paint up some ship minis. Here, here. There you go. Uh, Paul Becker says you can clip them. Uh, the box is at least one season of uh, <laughs> Mandalorian worth clipping. <laughs> Uh, John says, ah, Warlord is just taking pre-orders is all. Uh, Cine Dave says, I just ordered the War Games Illustrated with the free sprue uh, to test out the figs. Robbie says, preach on, brother. Now make me want, want it too. Looks awesome. John says, I was impressed, and I've been getting them for years and dumping them in the box. Sprues, uh, Wisconsin, uh, WI. Uh, I think I will paint them as Confederate since I have Grey Primer. There you go. Uh, Paul Beckett says, I've seen guys on YouTube who have shaved down the broad brim hats into kepis and keep union side uh, uniformed. Uh, I feel like I'm watching Home Shopping Network for men. <laughs> I'm going to get a crotchety piece of shit on the Home Shopping Network. That's always the thing. <laughs> Except yeah, we're not going to have anybody right. fall off ladders. <laughs> no, no Chuck Norris, just Matt's hairless arm. Yes, thank you for noticing that I'm hairless. Uh, I have black powder, but not really impressed. Yeah, you know, right, John? It's beer. It's it's a beer and pretzels type game. Uh, I literally never heard an American pronounce Jacobite rebellion before. Okay, uh, made me smile. Paul Pickett says, "Search the internet for Black Powder Tactical Commander. It's a free, high quality PDF. ACW and Napoleonic War Master rules. Perfect." Yep. John, check out the Altar of Freedom on Drive Through RPG. Altar yep. Freedom is really good. I guess. What you can get for 120 from 40k? Oh my God! It's the Wendigo question all over again. <laughs> yeah, oh yeah, it's like for it's for 100. 100, 100. Except 100. For just the fun part for the low low cost of near on 5,000 of these Robert Downey Jr. ACW figures, you can buy a whopping three Wendigos and eat up every chicken in Mexico. That's the chupacabra, isn't it? Yeah, that's the chupacabra, buddy. Whatever, dude. And it's not chickens, it's goats. Not Jay, you... Uh, never mind. Huh. Hey, all I'm saying is chupacabra literally translate to goat sucker. 
I was we'll going to I was going to suggest you do something else with the goats, but that's okay too. Um, but wait, there's more. <laughs> um, we were just talking about home shopping network, so I felt like I needed to get my ACW. Hell yeah, Paul Beckett says. How many Big Mac meals can you buy for $120? <laughs> well, American Big Mac meals or Australian Big Mac meals? Because I don't know how long it takes for kangaroos to deliver those things. All right. <laughs> well, we've opened the box. We've had a discussion about it. Um, you know, it, it is what it is. It's, it's epic battles. There's a ton of miniatures. Um, there's a lot in here. Uh, they are all the same sprue. We know McMurray doesn't really care for it. <laughs> that being said, and, just and, going on the gauntlet. You I'll paint you paint the union and we'll you, race. Uh, you get a free, uh, basically not a free, but you get a small rule book. You get a condensed version of the glory. Hallelujah. You get some Sarissa precision buildings. You get all the flags you need, the bases you need. And uh, this is a great to get me started set. I would guess uh, that's what I would say. Focusing on positives. I think that, you know, if you've never played ACW and you want to get into it, uh, but you don't want to paint at 28 millimeter scale, you can go 10 mil, two mil, you know, or, or get this as well. So um, you guys got any final thoughts? Uh, Painting race, you paint union, I'll paint the Confederates. Let's see who gets done first. Let's do it. You win. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I was actually trying to be positive and get all these things painted so we can play this game, but okay, that's fine. We'll do that in 20 years. <laughs> I was joking. Come on now. You can do it. Yeah, that'd be great. Uh, not Jay? Uh I like the flags. <laughs> and Devin? Like I said, I still think this is an excellent uh, entry into the ACW. I mean, it like, like I said, it's black, it's, it, or not black powder. It's uh it's, it's warlord games. You're not getting high quality rule sets from warlord games. No disrespect, but I mean, let's take a look at it. Bolt action is nothing more than world war two 40 K. So, <laughs> but it's a whole lot better than black powder. Uh, I, I I will defer to you on that. I just think that, it, yes, it's a good entry level for those interested in ACW. I'd say, I mean, in, in Warlord's defense, bolt action, as much as I like to talk shit on it, is <laughs> pretty darn good rule set. You've played the ever-loving Christ out of it. It's it's a good rule set. It really is. Wardrobe? Uh, I like the Sarissa Precision. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, well, uh, thank you, viewers. Thank you for all your comments, guys. I uh, hope you enjoyed. Um, I know that uh, Corey's wondering if we're all drunk. Uh, no. <laughs> Yet. Yet. <laughs> uh, Hex Hex says, I'll play it. Call me when it's painted. Okay. <laughs> uh, yes, Corey, very drunk uh, uh, from Canada. Paul Becca says, from plastic glue fumes? Yeah, probably. Yeah. So, say, Hex Hex, can you and, and you and Kev Sharp clip all these for us? And then we'll do the rest of it. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> uh, so, thank you guys. Is Chris going to play the British Intervention Force coming out of Canada for this? Maybe. <laughs> I don't know. We're, we're going to go ahead and end this right now. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Last but not least, guys, from me to you, ta-ta, and we'll catch you in our next episode.